name's Lauren. I'm 16 years old and I'm a rising junior at a prep school in New York City. So I took the IC um, before my freshman year of high school and I got into my dream school. So I thought it'd be really fun to help other students preparing for their IC. So I'm working on, I'm working from an IC practice test on worldwide tutoring. The link will be below and also PDF in case it's not on there anymore. The link, okay. So I'm going to focus on the two math sections of the IC in this video. And I live near a train station, so if you hear one passing by, just ignore it. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. So in this video, we're going to do the first 10 questions of section two. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see better. So our first question is, two radii of a circle combine to form a diameter. If they meet at an angle whose measure, if they meet at an angle whose measure in degrees is, okay, so we need to figure out what that angle is going to be. So if we have a circle, right? Well, a diameter um, and radius, they both go to the, cir the center of the circle. So let's say that's the center. So we're forming a diameter. So a diameter is just a line that goes from one side to the other that goes to the center of the circle. So that is a diameter. And it's formed by two radiuses. So like that, those are the two sides, just so you, can get, you guys can see it. So we know that, and we're trying to figure out the angle is. So it's, got, it's a straight line, right? And that means that this angle is 180 degrees. So we have that answer here, and that means we have our answer. It's 180. Okay, next question. The price of stock doubled from Monday to Tuesday. What is the percent increase in the price of the stock from Monday to Tuesday? Okay, so just write Monday here. So let's say the price of the stock was $100. And then on Tuesday, it was two hundred dollars because it has to double, right? Um, well, we need to find the percent increase. So the difference between these two numbers will be two hundred minus one hundred. We have a hundred dollar difference. Well, a hundred dollars is well, it's a hundred percent. Of the original price of the stock. So the percent increase is a hundred percent. Next question. Which of the following is true? So you have to just figure out which ones are true. And I prefer to work with fractions rather than decimals. So we're just going to turn these into fractions. So our first one here, so we have two tenths or 0 0.2, which is 2 tenths, times 0 0.2, which again is 2 tenths, equals, well, it's 4 over 100, oops, which is 0 0.04, which is not 0 0.4, so that means A is not true. Um, what about the next one? 0 0.2, 2 tenths, times 2, 0 times 2 over 1, equals, okay, well it's 4 over 10, which is 0 0.4, which is not 0 0.04, so that means B is also incorrect. Okay, next question. 0 0.2 divided by 2 equals 0 0.1. Okay, let's see. Well, 0 0.2 divided by 2, that's just multiplying by a half. That's the same thing. So if we do 2 tenths times 1 half, we get 2 over 20, which is 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. So this one is true. That means our answer is C. And just to prove that we're right, D, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1, so 2 tenths um, divided by 1 tenth. Okay, well, dividing a fraction, you can just flip the fraction over, and then you can do multiplication. Oopsies. So, flip it over, we're going to get 2 tenths times 10 over 
one, sorry, that was my brother. Um, <laughs> so two times times 10 over one, which is 20 over 10 is equal to two, which is definitely not 0 0.01. So that's just to prove that C is indeed the correct answer. Okay, question four. A square has a perimeter of eight. What is the length of one of its sides? Okay, let's just draw a little square. That does not look like a square, but just ignore that. So all the sides are just equal to each other. So length, we're gonna use L for length. Okay, so we know that all of those added up have to equal eight because that's what a perimeter is. So L plus L plus L plus L or four L equals eight. So we divide by four on both sides. We're gonna get L equals two. That means that length of one of the sides is two or a. Question five, we're halfway there, guys. All of the following are equal to one third except, okay, so six eighteenth is equal to one third because if you divide both the numerator and the denominator by six, you're gonna get one third. So another way to check this would be to do, okay, well, six eighteenth. We need to get one third. Is there something we can do to both the numerator and the denominator to get one third? Well, there is. We can divide by six, as I said before. But it has to be the same on both the numerator and the denominator for them to be equal. What about 10 30? 10 over 30. So 10 over 30. Okay, well, we could divide by 10. Separate these a little bit. Good. So A and B are both true. Um, what about 11 over 33? So you're going to divide by 11 on both sides to get one third. Sorry, I keep, I'd say both sides. I mean the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator. To get one third. So positive elimination, that means our answer must be D. But just to prove it, because this was A, C, D, 7 over 24 equals one third. Okay, well, divide by 7... Oh, divide by eight. So that doesn't work. You can't divide the numerator by num one number and the denominator by another. That's just, they're not gonna be equal. So that means our answer has to be D. Question six. If N is an integer, which of the following must be odd? Okay, so N is an, an integer is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, including zero. So let's see. Well, let's just give n two different values. I think that'll be a good way to prove it. So let's say n equals 5 and n equals 8. So I'm giving it an odd value and a negative value because we're working with a question that is surrounded by whether the number is odd or even. So we definitely have to have two different values that are both odd and even. So 2n, so 2 times 5, be equal to 10, so that's even, that's already not true. And just to prove it again, 2 times 8 equals like 16, which they're both even. So definitely not a. What about b? Well, we have 5 plus 1, 6, that's even again. 8 plus 1 is 9, though, so one of them was odd, but they're not both, so it's not true either. What about C? Okay, well, 2 times 5 plus 1. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 equals 11, so that's odd. Let's see, 8 times 2, ooh, sorry, I'm doing it backwards. 2 times 8 plus 1, so 2 times 8 is 16. We add 1 to that, we're going to get 17. So we're going to get two odd numbers. And just the mathematical reason why this is true, when you multiply any number, odd or even, times 2, um, you're going to get an even number. But when you, because of that, when you add 1 to that even number, you're always going to get an odd number. So that's why C is true. And just to prove that we didn't mess up, 3 times n, so 3 times 5 plus 1, 13 plus 1, equals 16. That's already even. And 3 times 8 plus 1, 
24. That's 25. So we're going to get two numbers. They're not both odd. So that's definitely not true. Okay. Question 7. If 700 divided by x equals 35, then x equals... Okay, well, let's just rewrite it. I always rewrite my questions. I don't know if you guys do that, but I always rewrite them. So, 700 divided by x equals 35. Well, we want to get rid of this fraction. So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by x. So, if we multiply it by x, we're going to get 700 equals 35x. Um, let me just rewrite that. I'm a perfectionist. I don't like it when it looks terribly messy. Um, so 700 equals 35x. Okay, well, I know that 35 times 2 is 70. So that means that 35 times 20 must be seven. I mean, must be 700. But if you don't know that, you can just do the math. So if we do some long division, 35 again times 2 is 70. So we have 0 here, so we need to get 0, so 35 times 0 is 0, so there's our final answer. So yeah, that means our answer must be C. Okay, question 8. Which of the following is closest to 15%? Let's see, 1 7th, 1 5th, 1 4th, and 1 3rd. Okay, so I'm already seeing fractions I immediately recognize, so 1 5th. I know is 20%, but just to prove it, well, whenever we're trying to convert a fraction into a percentage, we multiply the fraction by 100. Okay, so we're going to get 100 over 5, which is equal to 20%. Okay, so 1 fifth is 20%. I knew that, but just to prove it. So if I did the same thing for 1 fourth, 1 fourth times 100 equals... 100 over 4 was 25%. So 1 third times 100 was 100 divided by 3, which um, is a repeating number. It's like 33.3 .3 repeating percent. Just to prove that, if we just did some math, 3 and 100, we get 3 is 9, so we have 1, bring down the 0, times 3 is 9, 1, we get our decimals now. 0, 3 is 9, 1, another 0, 3 is, see, so you get the point. So this it just keeps repeating. But 1 7th, I don't actually know. So I would do what I did here with the 3 and the 1 3rd. So I do 7 and 100 divided by 7. And let's see, let me just move this over so I have some more space. Okay, well, 7 times 1 is 7. We're going to have 3, bring down 0. 7 times 4 is 28. Okay, we have 2. Oh, okay, we're going into decimal territory. We don't really need to do that, though, because we know it's 14 point something. So it's 14 point some, something percent. Okay, well, we already know that 14 point something percent is definitely closer to 15 percent than 20 percent, 25 percent, or 33.3 .3 repeating percent. So that means our answer is going to be A. <clears throat> okay, question nine. We're almost done with this video. When A is divided by five, it leaves a remainder of three. What is the remainder when A plus two is divided by five? Okay, so I like to assign values to variables when I can. It's just easier for me to figure it out. So what number can I divide by five to leave a remainder of three? So it has to be a multiple of 5 plus 3, right? So, for example, 20 divided by 5, um, that equals 4. But we need to have a remainder of 3, so it's 20 plus 3. Well, we get 23 divided by 5 equals 4 remainder 3. Okay, so... We now have a remainder of 3. So what is the remainder when a plus 2 is divided by 5? Okay, what's, well, a was 23 here. So 23 plus 2 is 25. Divide that by 5, and we get 5, and there's no remainder. It's 0. So we know our answer must be a. But just to explain this, 
So the way it works is we're adding two. So now we have a remainder of five. And when you, when you, the remainder is the same as the number you're dividing by. It means you can just divide by that number one more time. Okay, last question. The difference between 30% of 400 and 15% of 400. Okay, well, 30% is 3 tenths. Again, I love my fractions. So 3 tenths times 400 over 1 equals 1,200 over 10, which is 120. So that's 30%. Well, 15% is half of 30%. So we could just automatically just say, okay, well, 120 divided by 2, one half of 120 is 60, and we could do it like that. But if the number is a little bit harder, you'd probably want to do it like this. So we would say 15%, okay, that's 15 over 100 times 400 over 1. You're going to get, okay, well, we can simplify this here. So we have one four instead, using that cross multiplying stuff. Um, and we're gonna get 60. Okay, so that's 15%. Okay, so we need to find the difference between the two. So we're gonna have 120, which is the 30%, minus 60, which is the 15%, which is gonna be equal to 60. So our answer is going to be C. Okay. Well, there we're done. That's the first 10 questions of this packet. Again, it's going to be it's linked below. Thank you so much for watching. Also, please comment down below if you guys want to see some more videos. Um, yeah, so thank you. See you next time.